I'm very excited for this new series that I created in collaboration with the editorial team at Cariology. This is New Gear Discoveries, episode 1. The monthly... Th the monthly... Monthly... <laughs> the monthly series in which I showcase new gear items that have been carefully curated by the awesome team at Cariology. And before we continue, let's roll the intro. Alright, in this new series I will showcase new items that pique the interest of the Cariology team. This is not a review, but I will let you know why these items are interesting and of course I will let you know my first impressions of these items. Okay, the very first item on our list is the James Brand Ellis. This is James Brand's version of a multi-tool knife. So let's start with what it is. It has a drop point shaped blade that is partially serrated and it is made out of Sandwick 12C27 metal steel. Honestly, I am not that educated about the metal or the steel that is used on knives. So let's stick with that Sandwick 12C27 steel i think it's a locking blade the scales are made out of aluminium and to make this not only a knife but also a multi-tool this also has a bottle slash flathead screwdriver and a scraper on the back last but not least you also have the bail loop at the end to attach a carabiner or maybe your keys so why is it special this James Brand Alice is a multi-tool and I put multi-tool in quotation marks because as a Swiss army knife user, just having the blade and a bottle opener and maybe a screwdriver, um, that doesn't scream multi-tool to me. But in the end, I usually 90% of the time only use a blade and a bottle opener. So this is actually pretty useful most of the times. Furthermore, having a lockable blade gives me a lot of peace of mind because I actually had the blade on my Swiss army knife close shut on me once and my fingers got stuck between the blade and the scales of my Swiss army knife. Fortunately, I suck at keeping my blades sharp so I didn't hurt myself that much. So having a lockable blade on the Ellis is pretty cool and as I said, gives me lots of peace of mind. So then the question is, who is this for? As I said, or as you can see, this thing is very well designed, very well made as far as I can tell. I need to emphasize that I'm not yet that knowledgeable about knives in general. So I'm not really sure which steel or what kind of blade type is actually good. But I can see that this is very well designed, good looking, and to me it feels high quality. So in a way, since this looks like a very modern take on a knife and a multi-tool, I would say this is like the apple of knives. Take this as you will. If this is a good or a bad thing, that's up to you. But it is well designed. So it is definitely for the design conscious person, especially if you want to take this everywhere. So also this, because this looks so well designed, it's not that intimidating. So with this design, I could see this with a suit or a dress shirt Um yeah, that's why I would say if you are very design conscious and you want a knife that's not that intimidating and maybe also looks appropriate with your office wear, um, then definitely this is for you. So what are my first impressions about this? Design always comes with a price and that's basically what it comes down to. I always say buy cheap, buy twice. Um, that's a German saying that basically means if you buy a cheaper product that potentially doesn't have a good quality, 
and this product might break on you and then you probably end up buying the higher quality item that you should have bought in the first place. So you pay twice for the cheap item that broke on you and for the more expensive item that you should have bought in the first place. But that's not to say that cheap items are always less quality and expensive items are always good quality. And as a long time Swiss Army Knife user that you can get for a fraction of the price of the Alice and in my experience had always good quality but are rather old school looking, it's pretty difficult to justify the price of the Alice. But as I said, if you are design conscious and you want something unique in your pocket that does stand apart and is also good quality and I need to kind of compare this again to an Apple product that is also very expensive and very well designed. If it's good or bad, that's up to you. But I think the comparison is working pretty well. Um, the Alice is the apple of the knife world in a way. So if you are design conscious, then the Alice might be for you. So the next item is also an EDC tool. That's the Keyport Anywhere Tools. And I say tools because it's a modular tool. So what is it? The Keyport Anywhere Tools is a modular system that consists of stackable EDC tools. You have a couple of different tools. The Anywhere Clip, the Neighbor Knife, the Mocker 2 Multi-Tool, the Pocket Flare and the Wii Link. And you can stack up to three modules together. You basically have the Anywhere Clip at the bottom, then you can stack one of the two middle tools on top of it, which are the Neighbor Knife or the Mocker 2 Multi-Tool. And then on top you can attach one of the top modules, which are the Pocket Flare and the Wii Link. So why is the Keyport Anywhere tool special? It's, yeah, it's a modular system, so you can change it up depending on your situation. For instance, you're going out at night to a bar. Then take out the knife, attach the flashlight and the multi-tool and you're basically good to go. And once you're back, just attach the knife back again and maybe the Wii Link if you want to charge up your phone during the day. And who is this for? Honestly, probably everyone because it is modular. You can change it up to your own personal needs. You can only buy what you need. You can change it up to the situation that you're in. And that's basically my first impressions because this thing is incredible. You only take with you what you need, switch it up based on the situation that you're in. Or if you don't need maybe a flashlight. For instance, I always carry a flashlight, so I wouldn't need that module and therefore I could save money and not buy that or detach it and then attach the Wii Link module to charge up my phone. Yeah, I really like this thing and I'm looking forward to test it out. But the Mocha 2 multi-tool, it says in the description it's 11 multi-tools and with even when I count the Phillips and Flathead screwdriver as two tools, I can only count nine. But still, that's quite a lot and having this box opener and cord cutter, that's pretty neat to be honest, instead of using your big knife to open a box. So the next two items are actually finally bag related. These two are made by Chrome Industries and are part of the Decline series. So this is the semantics backpack and this is the handlebar bag. So what is it? This collection has been designed by the designer, artist and bicycle rider Dustin Klein. That's why Decline. This is a collection specifically with the bicycle rider in mind. The semantics backpack and the handlebar bag are both very basic, minimal and therefore lightweight. 
So why is this special? I personally ride a lot of bicycles and also ride a motorcycle. So I really like those bike specific features like attaching the bag to the handlebar, but also features like reflectivity, which is actually also pretty useful when you are not riding a bicycle or a bike. But more importantly, the Semantics backpack has a lightweight and small and flat footprint while still keeping the great build quality that we are used from Chrome Industries. And then we have to question who is this for? Obviously for bicycle riders, but because of the small footprint and being that lightweight, this is actually a great bag that you can pack inside your luggage or your carry-on backpack for instance. So you travel with your carry-on backpack and once you arrive at the hotel, just leave your big carry-on backpack at the hotel and use the semantics backpack to walk around the city for instance. My personal first impression about the semantics and the handlebar bag the build quality is great. Chrome Industries always have a great build quality in my experience. And while the design is a little bit basic for my taste, um, I can still see myself packing this semantics backpack inside my carry-on backpack to use it for my day-to-day -day trips when I'm on vacation. The next item is the Wanderer Weir. Weir? 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 I'm not sure how to say it. V-E-E-R. And this looks like a pouch, but it is actually a packable backpack. So what is it exactly? If you want something a bit more high-tech and even smaller that you can pack into your suitcase or carry-on bag, then this is the Wanderer Weir. It's an 18-liter packable backpack. And now you probably ask, why is it special? So not only is this packable, but it also has an inflatable, inflatable back panel and an inflatable cube for fragile equipment like a camera, for instance. So basically this thing is small to pack in your carry-on backpack, but becomes big enough and more importantly, comfortable enough to carry all day long on your day trip. So that makes the question for who this is for pretty easy. So this is actually for everyone who wants to travel light with a carry-on backpack and once they are on their destination still have a great and comfortable and big backpack for your day trip. So and what are my first impressions? Well, <laughs> this thing is awesome. It's such a unique and refreshing and genius design having not only a packable bag which is actually pretty common or at least i have seen that quite a few times but having this inflatable back panel and this inflatable cube for fragile gear like your camera for instance that's genius i actually at first had a little bit trouble to unpack this thing from itself and setting it up because there were lots of small little pockets and i wasn't able to find the inflating back panel because it is stuck a little bit in there but once you figure it out and you need to figure it out first because as i said this is a very unique and refreshing design once you figure it out it is actually pretty easy and yeah, as I said, I, genius. It's a genius idea having that inflatable back panel, but more importantly, the inflatable cube that makes this bag so useful for your vacation when you have a camera with you, for instance. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to test this out when I'm traveling and see, more importantly, how durable and how practical and how comfortable this inflatable back panel actually is. So having this bag pack into itself and unpack out of itself multiple times, I'm really curious to see how durable this thing is going to be in the long run. But for now, I think this is a very cool design.
Okay, this was the very first episode of New Gear Discoveries. Please let me and the team of Carryology know how you like this new series. And more importantly, which of these items did you like the best? And like always, if you have any more questions, please comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, click the like button. And please feel free to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell icon so you won't miss next videos. Thank you very much.